Welcome to CMTS 2019. I got the whole team here, shut the shop down for the day so that we can come and learn and just uh, see what this industry has to offer. We're at the Quali Chem booth. Love this stuff. There's something in here. Card here to check out our coolant filter video where we're filtering 251C. Yeah, you don't see them in the wild too often. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. But it's nice that you brought it in your pocket with you today. Very cool. Can you open it for me? Nice. When did you get it? Uh, a few months ago. Oh, so it's uh, recent. Did yeah, you get it off the Maker's Choice list? Were you picked? Yes. Yeah. It's twenty four nineteen. <laughs> You're happy with it? Yeah. yeah oh, yes. Yeah, so okay. For sure. Oh, thank you. Very cool. Very much. It's cool. So what is it? It's a magazine base for a mm. Glock 17. Okay. So in the States, you can buy, that's a magazine extension, so it would add capacity, but in Canada, you can't add capacity to the magazines. It's limited to 10, so it's like a plus zero, so it mimics the look. Oh. So it's, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That's an amazing finish. Thank you. <clears throat> you can see there's like some backlash. Yeah. On, but... Yeah, so there's like the backlash, which is just the machine. Yeah. Let me slow down the chamfer. I gotta get, that's just a cheap chamfer okay. tool. I gotta get a lake shore Get tool. those spiral flute lake shore ones, they're so good. Yeah. What or tool are you engra engraving with? Lake shore one. The, uh, that's a, that one's a 20 thou. Like the ball? There. Yeah. It's a little rough. I have spindle run out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like one thou. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, it is what it is. It's beautiful though. It's so solid feeling. So Angelo and Sky came separately. Um, I haven't found them yet, but Angelo wants one of these so bad. An optical comparator. Uh, I don't know much about them. I know how they work and I've just never used one, but he's used them before and he's like, we need one of these. So we'll, uh, we'll pick up a used one eventually sometime, but they're pretty cool. So you put your part in there and it's a shadow graph. So it gives you this shadow, it magnifies it and you can measure distances um, very accurately. So for some of the parts that we do, it'd be very helpful because it's hard to measure sometimes. Eric was just saying a minute ago how he needs some, some proper dust filtration. So we're going to leave him alone and let him, uh, let him dive deep with this guy and learn a bunch of stuff. And then he can come back to us and tell us what he's learned. I loves me some measuring equipment. That's our Zoller Smile Compact. A little bit simpler technology in the fully manual machine. Um, all I need to do is bring my machine down, my optic carrier down. Okay. Get it into view, and the minute I let go, it's going to automatically snap right to that corner. And so as long as you're, as long as you're in the screen, it'll self-center. Yep. And now from there, uh, I'm going to can you rotate just, it manually? Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to rotate it around. You'll see there's a small bar down here. Oh, that's, that's my your focus max. Bar. Interesting. Yep. So I'm trying to look for that maximum value, get that as small as possible. Yeah. Once I have that, I'm going to press measure. Uh, this is just asking me to make sure I'm using the correct adapter, so HSK63. Once I accept those results, I can print off a label that looks just like this. It's got my X and Z values on wow. it, corner radius, angles. So now, now that I have all that information, I stick it right to my tool. And now all you have to do is plug it in, type in those values, and you're good to go. Can it also send data to the machine? Yes. That's so cool. that's our data output option. Right. Um, yeah. And if there's multiple flutes, will it measure runout? Yeah. So like um, e even by hand? Yeah. And so the benefit of this, especially with end mills, is that you're getting a true maximum X and Z value. But only on the biggest runout. flute. Yep, exactly. So it's not going to tell you difference between biggest and smallest on that screen anyway. Not with this program. This is just going to give you your maximum X and Z. So once we have that, we can press OK. And you can see my lines again are going to snap right to that picture and give me my X and Z output. So that's going to be the most accurate since it's picking up all the different flutes right. and any run out as right. well.
a 90 gallon tank. Um, so most machines, you know, one or two right. drains. Um, and I've, what I've seen some guys do is they'll pump all the chips and the coolant out and then, because there's a nice canvas filter on the inside, two cubic square foot bag in here. Okay. You just lift it out when it's when it's full, dump it out, put it back in. Oh, and so then, you're reusing the, the filter quite yeah, a lot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually when I sell these, I don't sell another filter for a couple of years. Huh. So, okay. So um, it sucks all the dirty coolant in, cleans the chips out of it, so you have relatively clean coolant relatively down clean. there. Now, it's not going to do anything about the way you lose, like the trample. Okay, yeah. You know, you're going to be pumping that back into the, into the machine. Um, and then, yeah, you just put the hose back on this one, reverse the motor, and pump it right back in. Nice. Pumps about 80 gallons a minute back in, a little bit slower pumping, but very quick. Yeah, you got to hold it down. This is really cool. All Canadian made. It's like the least uh, alternative, but Canadian made. Excellent for inspiration. Everything this nice is expensive, but uh, the quality is really there. Pretty cool. It's the flatter. <laughs> Holy moly. It makes parts flatter. G6, 600 millimeter pallet, uh, 20k spindle, 120 tools. Uh, this machine is very different from some of the other five axis machines you'll see at the show. It has no belts, no gears. The A and the C axis are direct drive torque motors. The X, Y, Z all directly driven. There is uh, the two uh, ball screws and linear guides in the Y axis. It is not the uh, master and slave setup. They are individually okay. driven. And, um, and uh, encoded and synced and everything. So that, Exactly. Yeah. It is built in Taiwan, but all of the major components on the machine are coming out of uh, Germany and out of Japan. Yeah. So the spindle, cable are both Kessler. And then you have, I mean, even down to the grease lubrication for your roller guys, uh, Japanese. You got me on the spot here. How far do I have to twist? <laughs> yeah, it's very simple. Um, it's just fine. It's wrapping your head around exactly what to do. There you go. Got it. Some people spend like five minutes on it. Well, I'm glad I wasn't one of the ones spending yeah. five minutes on your pen then. What's up? How much? I listen to your podcast all the time and uh, it's been really inspiring. That is cool. It's giving me some great advice and I can really relate to everything you do. Yeah. Like from start to finish and all your 10 year journey. Uh, it talks about you know, all the challenges you face and all the struggles. I totally relate to that. So you're starting a business? Yeah, so it's called Vision Forge. Vision Forge. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm also at Amazon right now. Amazon? How's that working? Uh, pretty good. Um, we got into first prototypes and now we're releasing some new models. We're getting into like 1911 grips and different new designs and patterns. So you're machining aluminum, anodized, Grips for 1911s. Anything else? Yeah, CZ 1911, and uh, we're working on new products and stuff. We're more mostly a startup. Nice. Yeah. So I signed up uh, for your saga. Yeah. And yeah. Have you seen one yet? One. No, I haven't. Check really this excited. out. Oh, man. That is so cool. How do you? How do you? How do you uh... There you go. That is sick. You guys gotta sign up for this. <laughs> to buy one of these, man. And if you need 1911 grips, this is the guy. Yeah. Support Canadian. Made in Canada. Yep. There you go. Here. Thanks, man. Cool. Yeah. Good luck with the new shop. Yeah. Here's open. I'm moving. We'll, we'll yeah. find something for sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. It was nice meeting nice. you. Nice meeting you. Yeah. Take it easy. And here we have a guillotine turned into a safety door. The safety door is clearly inspired by the guillotine.
the carbon filter I make. So it's Marcus from AeroX, Misfit. So you guys developed a new carbon filter. Yes. This is your regular, what do you call it? Fiber, fiber bed filter. Fiber bed filter. And we're taking the same technology and we're making a carbon filter out of it using maximum media possible. Nice. To really slow the airflow down through here. So can I take credit for this because Eric was complaining sure. about the stink yes. of the oil? I think Eric gets the credit. Oh my god, <laughs> yes. he shaved. I did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Didn't recognize you. You look thinner. <laughs> so theory with this is if we put it on the Swiss, um, the Swiss lay is running oil. It's kind of stinky, like we all smell it and the carbon should help eliminate those odors yeah. and I'm really curious to try that out. I'm curious how long it's going to last. Yeah. That's, that's really the, uh, the big question mark. So, and you guys make the filters like everything you do this. Yeah. Other people can't. Do you make the fabric or do you no, buy the... No, okay, buy the, you buy, buy the, the fabric, media. but yep, you're making I it. I buy the bulk media and we make this. So. That's beautiful. As far as I can tell, no one else has made this. And it's like eight inches thick. Maximum media per. Yeah. You know, and ours has the HEPA media. filter as well, right? Yeah, so we're actually going to change both those filters. Out. Okay. So right now, we have the HEPA filter on top. I made a new, a new filter that's going to combine the HEPA in here. Angelo just sticker bomb this. So we're here at the NSK booth. They are known for doing their high-speed spindles. There's a 300,000 RPM. <laughs> the guy behind me messed me up. There's a 300,000 RPM uh, Dremel, basically, that he handed it to me. I didn't even know it was on. Um, it engraves so cleanly and so beautifully. It's like a dentist tool, basically. It's amazing. So with this thing, uh, it's air-powered, right? No, so this one's electric. So it basically takes the ceramic stone and it moves it in and out with a 0.8 millimeter stroke, uh, super duper quick. You can turn down the vibration speed. And this is basically gonna polish your metal very quickly. So we've been thinking about getting one of these to do some of the blade bevels, the rasp bevel, something like that. Um, and it's really fun to be able to come here and, and see it and use it. I kinda like it a lot. What do you think about it, Eric? I think it's pretty damn cool. That's like, great. it's so smooth and concentric, and like I'm used to using a Dremel that's just all over the place. And that's like fun. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is surgical. The company appears to be Halter, and they make this robot arm that can pick and place parts from machine and back. Yeah, so right now you're actually in the, your bag's in the slow down zone, that's why it's running slow, so if you back up a bit there. Whoa, that's pretty sensitive. So it's actually a, a full programmable light curtain, you can make it any shape, you've got a table in the middle. So programmable, so you, you stopped it there and there. Yeah, so it's, it's field of vision is past 180 degrees of that sensor. Point, yeah. Right, so if you've got a table in the way, you can make it a, as a, like an, an ignore pocket. Yeah. Um, you've got a slow down check, full slow down section, and then a, a trip section. He was saying there's a vision system, so even my bag was too close, and the, uh, the robot was slowing down. Pretty cool. Cool. Fun. Yeah. Walking good, around, good. seeing cool stuff. Good. Business doing good? Yeah. Yeah. Really good. good. That's awesome to hear, man. That's yeah. really cool. You guys ever seen that stuff before? We were just looking at it, yeah. yeah. You see, we go on YouTube. We do the uh, harmonics because we, we do individual harmonics on our spindles. Okay. You check us up on YouTube. We do like the, the uh, Star Wars anthem <laughs> on our machines. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> nice. Pretty cool. Actually, our programmer who was just here, Rap Kitchka, he did the program for yeah. us. It's actually pretty big. It's got like oh. got a lot of good hits. So wow. SW on YouTube is really nice. cool. <laughs> That's a really nice surface. Yeah. Are any of these hardened yeah. steel? Uh, th I know these. Uh, this is carbide, but hardened steel, I couldn't tell you. 
Eric's excited. The polished carbide too? Yeah. That was pretty cool in the process because your cutting tools will last like, a lot longer once polished. So. Do the parts need a lot of space, breathing room between them? No, that would be the maximum size. Because I mean, you so. can fit, you can fit a few blades in there. Yeah, exactly. So even just maybe this three machine, or four. Right? Four, yeah. So, what's going on here? So this is an electro polishing machine, a dry electro polishing machine. So at first, it looked like just the corn cob tumbler. Like, right. You know, the corn cob media in this interesting tumbler but it's actually like this polymer mixture of like three different types of like they look like rubber ball bearing like yeah. tiny little glass beads yeah um, just let me show you yeah as the time is going you see how the, the mirrors uh, surface is coming yeah yeah that was all uh, like milky and just regular 10 minutes ago yeah so on that arm it's moving around in the vibrating tub going up and down and, and applying electricity yes which is micro polishing the surface the resin it conducted. conducted that's crazy the resin con contain our formula so every tiny touches release on the metal surface our formula which create this final mirror effect does the media wear over time you have to yes. throw it away yeah but it can't is it cheap it's 100 hours of polishing. Okay. Yeah, that's a good amount. And then you just throw it away and put new stuff in? And yeah. Do you have to throw it away anywhere special? Or? There is a specific code. Then you only contact with your local recycling company and they know what to do. Okay. Perfect. That's beautiful. Yeah, so it, it takes apart from rough casting or machine finish or whatever. And in not very much time, it puts a lot of work into it. Yeah. Different and more than like a regular tumbler that we've seen before. So yeah, apparently. Well, that's a tumbled finish. Yeah, so this was a tumbled finish, and then 45 minutes later. That's insane. It's full mirror. Like, it's just so greasy with people's fingers, but. <laughs> like, it's crazy. And I don't know, like, how hard these are or anything, but. Uh, but it was polishing carbide, too. Yeah, exactly. Well, it was deburring, I guess. Cool. Good find. Yeah, lots of potential here. And it seems like a fairly new uh, technology. Yeah. I've never heard of it. Yeah. So. I, it's, it's two technologies I've heard of that somebody put together, which is great. That's new. We saw some really cool stuff, uh, a lot of stuff we've seen before, some stuff we haven't seen before which was really cool. Um, I should have maybe taken better notes because I'm having trouble like remembering my favorite things, but uh, there was some cool stuff for sure. And it's the end of the day and my brain is starting to shut down, so I uh, can't think of straight. But it was fun, I'm glad we came, I'm glad we could bring everybody. Thanks for watching. <laughs>